Welcome to the Tim Moen Show. We have a special event happening here in Alberta in May. And uh, this is an event I went to before I've spoken at in Vancouver, uh, put on by uh, an investor named Giant Brandy. And uh, it was full of uh, people, freedom lovers. And I love this, some of the speakers there. You had uh, Doug Casey and Rick Rule. These guys are like basically billionaires who are also liberty lovers, libertarians, who uh, who think that the primary goal of the libertarian is to uh, get rich so they have more choices and more influence available to them. I kind of like that idea. Uh, but anyways, uh, Giant is bringing that, uh, that conference to Calgary, you know, bringing it to Alberta. And so uh, my next guest is the uh, conference organizer, uh, Darcy Giroux. Darcy, welcome to the show. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. Excited. Glad to see you've uh, been putting out lots of content lately. Yeah, it's uh, it's been going great, uh, you know, all from starting a men's group and deciding to, to, you know, get some inspiration and accountability from a group of uh, of fellows around me. And uh, that, that it's it's a powerful thing. I'll have to do maybe a podcast or two on that. But let's bring mm -hmm. it back to what's happening here. Uh First of all, capitalism and morality. What? What? Why are we talking about capitalism and morality? Anyways, what do they have to do with each other? Isn't <laughs> isn't capitalism just uh, you know like a morally bankrupt philosophy of exploitation of creating wage slaves and robbing uh, workers of profit so that I could twirl my mustache into little <laughs> curls and yeah. cackle and sit on my hordes of gold like Elon yeah. Musk. It is. It, it's all. It's all those things, and that's why. And that's why we're promoting it here in Alberta. Ah, um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no. I mean, I. You know, I think one of the big misconceptions these days, you know, throwing around the word capitalism, um, you know, people, you know, people on the left and the right are generally talking about two different things when we talk about capitalism. Yeah. Um, you know. We, when we talk, when you and I talk about capitalism, we're talking about the the free market. We're talking about uh, you know voluntary interaction, mutual benefit. We're talking about cooperation, um, and you know we tend to qualify what the left calls capitalism as you know uh, crony capitalism or fascism, uh, that sort of thing. You know, unfortunately, I don't think enough. Uh, people on the left you know they tend to throw the word you know if we're me and you were promoting uh you know like some sort of radical free market anarchist type idea the the people on the left tend to accuse us of being of being fascists for that so right uh, un unfortunately i mean it, you know that that's that's the car that's the hand we're dealt right now and um and yeah and as far as as far as morality is concerned i mean the you know the only moral system is is a is a free market system it's something free of coercion something free of force um you know that's where uh ingenuity and industriousness and entrepreneurship happens um and yeah i mean that's you know there's there's a you know a ton of ton of literature available out there on how capitalism and morality uh work together you know i'm certainly not the the absolute expert on all this stuff or explaining it that's why i have a a show myself where i invite smarter people on to explain these things to me right. um oh wait a second but... i'm the dumb guy in this conversation not you how dare you <laughs> I'm, I'm inviting you here to be the expert <laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> yeah no i uh but um yeah so that i mean that's why that's why we want to talk about it we want to i mean the big thing for me and um is that no matter a, a seminar like this for me is i i think it's important so that you can have those conversations around capitalism and morality and also you know the state in general like it, how you and i understand the state as as coercive and intrusive on a, on a very fundamental level like you, you if you you know, like the, the taxation is theft kind of uh, kind of level, right? I mean, that's right. if they're using force to do something, 
Um, that is what it is. And then, you know, it's important. I think it's important for everybody to understand that idea, like, like Rothbard's, like read Rothbard's anatomy of the state, see what we're talking about, and then try and justify all, all this big government spending, all this intrusion into people's lives, all, you know, this kind of, uh, democratic mob rule that we live under um it, if if people understand you know where we're coming from how what the state is how it exists how it grows um how it impacts people's lives if they understand it on that level they can still try and justify all these other things they're up to but but i think we'll have a better understanding of or we'll be able to communicate on the same level as each other at least because like i said most of the time we're talking about two different things when we when we're talking yeah. about capitalism yeah ab absolutely i mean you know the the capitalism is used and, and that's why i you know i don't uh, usually argue with people um when the, when they say capitalism sucks and then they go on to describe the oligarchical arrangement that the state and giant corporations have together and how that exploits and, and oppresses the common man yeah completely agree bro i don't call that capitalism <laughs> i think that's uh that's a disingenuous use i mean we have other words for that called oligarchy cronyism corporatism i mean yep. those are where there are specific words to describe the intertwining of the state so but but you know people use terms differently all the time and the first job of the philosopher is to define terms before we engage in any kind of discourse uh, whether it's debate or just uh, discussion uh, because we mean very different things of it but uh, of course um you know th there is a branch of of leftism that says look um owning property is violence uh theft uh, rent is theft right if, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, you should, shouldn't be charging rent. You shouldn't be a landlord, um, that sort of thing. And yeah. of, of course, when you, when you have that, when you have that idea that, that, um, rent is theft or employment is, is theft, uh, then, you, you know, as a libertarian, as, as a common man knows that you can use violence to stop someone from stealing from you. Right. Mm -hmm. I can escalate force and use violence to stop someone from stealing from me. And so if my definition of um, stealing is uh, employment or or rent, well, what, what's to stop, you know, wouldn't I be justified in using violence to stop that theft, take over mm -hmm. the means of production, take over the <laughs> the, the the resident. And so this is where, yeah. I, you know, I think this this conference is going to be interesting because, you know, that that very clear philosophical foundation for uh, that undergirds Western civilization and separates uh, violent uh, barbarians from from a civil society with with, um, you know, proper dispute resolution and peacefulness. I mean, this is why we have property, right? It's like we can't all own everything. That's just not yeah. possible. And when you try to implement that, we see what happens. We see mass starvation. We see mass uh, oppression of people as the, as the, because at the end of the day, someone has to control it. It, it just, it, it, someone has to make a decision if it's a yeah. company or a, whatever. So who should that be? Who should control yeah have the right to control it and we and we as libertarians uh and capitalists say well it should be the property owner and we have a very clear theory on how property comes into being and how you can how you can justly ob obtain property and it's you know you appropriate it in nature you're the first one it's it's just unowned and then you you appropriate it you, you use mix your labor with it you um fence it in you you do something uh, with that property or you build a house that house is yours you you know that that's how yeah. property comes to be and and then we we can justly exclude someone from that property or use that property and exchange it different things like that um, but if that property belongs to everyone well then you know <laughs> whoever is the most powerful gets <laughs> gets ultimate control over it we have we have just nature red and tooth and claw 
Yeah. Um, you know, we have yeah, what sure. I see with my dogs every day and I have to separate them and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they fight yeah. over a bone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. You, you make an interesting point when you, when you, um, like you bring up this idea of like uh, rent is theft or, or property is theft. And I mean, so, some of that does, um, you know, in, even in our kind of, um, you know, philosophical, uh, lineology or our, our ideological ideological lineology that does there is some crossover um you know with early anarchist movements that were you know somehow intertwined with with these marxist ideas because um because at the time what they were witness what they perceived as the state was you know um you know the the oligarchy and the and uh, they were serfs and they didn't they didn't under you know those philosophers at the time i mean these things are all a work in progress i mean we all love adam smith but it would be unfair to say that adam smith's ideas were complete um right. in same going back to john locke and you know all the way up through the the whole anarchist movement um up right up well, until shit darcy like, for for most of human history we didn't realize that slavery was immoral, you know, That's right. like yeah. owning a human being yeah. was bad. We didn't know that, uh, <laughs> or, you know, yeah. we, we, we're making moral discoveries all the time. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah for sure. Can't, like, and it shouldn't have taken a genius to figure it out, but apparently it took a few thousand years and maybe uh, some would argue a civil war and different things. But, yeah. uh, you know, eventually <laughs> someone thank god figured out that slavery was immoral so my point here is that that morality progresses you know it yes. it, it is um the uh, who who said i can't remember some someone famous said the arc of of uh moral justice or our morality trends towards justice over time mm -hmm. and and so you know I, i've often thought about this or asked my kids to think about this Look, what beliefs do we have now about the world? What moral beliefs or assumptions do we have about the world now that they're going to laugh about 200 years from now, just like you and I are laughing about people who thought slavery was immoral how, how, you yeah. know, 200 years yeah. ago? So 200 Absolutely. years from now, what do you think it is about this? And, you know, I think maybe we're ahead of the curve here when we say we're like, we want statelessness. Like maybe the state is one of those violent institutions like slavery was that we're going to 200 years from now, people are going to go, go like, what were they thinking? I mean, yeah, of course it was. I mean, didn't they notice that it, it uses force? It uses guns to impose itself. Didn't they notice that it broke the very rules that it said uh, that it was there to pr protect you from like, yeah. Hey guys, uh, armed robbery is wrong. Now give us your money or we're going to shoot you dead. You know, That's right. Hey, <laughs> like what? <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you, you can't notice this obvious fact. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, to me, that's what this this conference is all about, right? Exploring these these moral questions. Absolutely. We think that, that capitalism is is the proper moral thing, but it needs to be properly understood, precisely defined. Um, you know, it, it, it can't be defined as um, uh, corporatism, and then mm -hmm. and then proclaimed to be moral of course corporatism is immoral so if that's how we're describing capitalism well obviously it's immoral so we have to precisely define it we have to to figure out what it what morality is to begin with and you know i think a good place to start is are these rule rules that can be universal right can they apply to everyone all the time at the yes. same time right yeah. and and go from there and I, I mean um you know, there's there's work that needs to be done here, uh, probably in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're done exploring the edges of morality here. Um, you know, but just to give you an example of uh, for the listeners out there, you know, let's let's talk about free speech for a second. Why is free speech a moral good? Well, some would argue that it, you know I'm a free speech absolutist, and therefore uh, I can say whatever I want, whenever I want. Well, can you? Though, can you can you talk? You know, interrupt a Jordan Peterson speech, and start yelling and talking in the middle of an auditorium. Yeah. Can you do that? Do you think that's free speech? Can well, you? Or, is, come is, into it, is my it moral? And, is it moral for me to interrupt you right now? Oh my God, Darcy! <laughs> how dare you? Uh, yeah, and look at this, Darcy. 
some for some reason we're taking turns like you speak yeah. then i speak then i you know we're not speaking at the same time constantly exactly. right yeah. and and you know you can't come into my home and insult my wife and different things right so as rothbard correctly points out again coming back to the capitalism thing all human rights are property rights mm -hmm. that solves your free speech problem that you can't touch my money or my body for words i say and, yep. and I can exclude you from my body and my money and my property. Uh, you know, you, you can't come on. You, you can't seize it. You can't fuck with it just because yep. I say some words. And Absolutely. that same right allows me to kick you out on your ass when you say words I don't like on my property. <laughs> right? Yeah. So oh, it's just a property right. It's the same yep. thing. And so, you know, that, and this is where I think this conference is like this can really help um, people who are interested in freedom and liberty clarify their thoughts. What do they mean when they, when, when I say I'm, I'm in favor of free speech, what precisely am I talking about here? What exactly does that, does that mean? And, For and sure. you know, these kinds of places can, can kind of help clarify that. For sure. And, and, for the conference, I mean, Jayant has always done, Jayant's the founder of Capitalism and Morality. Um, you know, I got discussing with him because we were looking at hosting something similar in Calgary. Um, and he's always done a, like a, an absolutely fantastic job of, yes. of, of protecting free speech in like within his conference. He, you know, he does not censor anybody who speaks there. He, do, you know, and he's had some, you know, he's had some very uh, great, you know, uh, speakers who have who have taken on some very hard topics. And, and and that's part of the beauty of free speech is it really gives us the ability to take on those hard, controversial topics and 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 discuss them in a way that you can you can come to some sort of resolution. I mean, we even last year and we've talked about uh, Dr. Walter Block. Uh, yeah. before you and I and I've had him on, on my show you've debated him and I mean last year he um, did his presentation on his thoughts on on abortion at the at the uh, capitalism and morality seminar in Vancouver and nice. and and I mean honestly I mean that's that's not an easy conversation to have and without free oh. speech you though, though you will never go through the logical process of coming to a a moral conclusion right, right. If, if you start shutting down at, at the you know and some people do at the mention of the word abortion so yeah right. free speech is important for for you know to to logically think through these things and to bounce ideas off of other intelligent people and yet yeah, move civil society in in the right direction absolutely yeah and, and i have <laughs> I remember uh, going to a capitalism and speaking at a capitalism and morality in Vancouver a few years ago. And Doug Casey gave a, uh, an interesting talk about a series of books he's writing. And I'm trying to remember it, but basically he, he tried to figure out how he could justify from um, an ethical perspective, uh, an, an assassin's job a dictator's job, a genocider's job. And like, like, yeah, it, it, the, the stuff he was talking about made me cringe and go like, Oh my God, I, I, <laughs> ugh, it, this is, yeah. I don't feel comfortable. I can't really find a hole in his argument, but, uh, like, uh, yeah. it, 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 like this is stuff that, that is not comfortable to, to talk about, but you're, you're not going to find that at a typical, let's say conservative convention or, um, you know, one of these run of the mill kind of cookie cutter rage against the left. I uh, think yep. this is where we're truly exploring the, the principles, I think, that undergird Western civilization and taking them to their logical conclusion, um, no matter what the how difficult or uncomfortable it might make us feel uh, doing so. And, yeah. and and so that's what I love about this. And so who do we have? Uh, for speakers, Darcy, coming to this conference? Well, the, the first big announcement, of course, is Tim Moen. Tim Moen hey. will be speaking there. <laughs> um, and yeah, we have some more, like, you know, part of the problem is, it's not a problem at all. We, you know, we're throwing together this one in May, May 20th, 2023. We're throwing it together fairly quick. And the reason is, is because the Vancouver seminar always happens in uh, late July or early September. Uh, we want a window in between the Calgary seminar and the Vancouver seminar, um, so we're looking at we're looking at spring is when we're yeah. going to be holding it annually, and um, 
And so the 2024 event, I mean, we're going to have a little more time to put together, uh, you know, a very large uh, group of people and group of speakers. Um, yeah. We still have we still have high hopes for this the one this oh. year. Um, hey, you got a great have... you, you got a great list of speakers. You got Maxine Bernier is coming. Okay, the yeah. guy's yep. been tearing up a storm across Canada. You're a fan of Maxine Bernier. You're going to want to come to this rally. You got Absolutely. Per Byland, who is an amazing uh, economist. He's an Austrian yeah. economist, which is the correct type of economist. You got Derek <laughs> Fildebrandt, the uh, the owner of the Western Standard, who is yeah. doing some great things on the independent media front. Uh, you got Darcy Giro, uh going to speak. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, Darcy. I I, I want to come out of the gate swinging hard. <laughs> you know, I, I got to show yeah. up old Max Bernier because him and I have a little thing going way back. You, you never know. You might, guys, you might see some <laughs> drama between your boy and Max here. That might be worth the price of admission. You never know. No, don't worry, Darcy. It won't come to fist of blows. <laughs> you know, but I, I might not be able to help myself from making him feel a little uncomfortable, yeah. a little bit, you know, yeah. from some of the some of the things, history we so. have together. But yeah. uh, what what should I talk about? Should I should I uh, I, I kind of well actually here I audience mean, you tell me audience what what do you think I should talk about here? Here's some ideas. Are we Darcy, live right now? Are they listening to us right now? No, they're not listening to us oh, okay. right now. No, this <laughs> okay. is being recorded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, um. So let so I I guess like uh you know Tim the, you know the one reason we really wanted you is because like. Um, you know, Max, Max is great. And I, you know, I was on the fence about having Max at the conference, if I'm being totally honest, not because I don't like Max, I get along with him very well. And, and I respect a lot of the stuff he's doing. But um, this is not a political conference. This is a philosophical conference. So right. um, that that, you know, uh, and I and but Max is going to give a good speech. I mean, you, you yes. know him quite well. He's had uh you know, he's very well read. He's read Mises. He's read Rothbard. He he knows this stuff. I mean, it helped him establish his um Yeah, and it's his, weird. His it's weird. He's read all this stuff. He he should know better. He should know that well, the drug war is a bad thing, you know. He should know <laughs> yeah. that we shouldn't ask the government to do things. You know, I guy I, I'm look, I am sympathetic to the idea that we, you know, migration is an issue right now because of how big the state is. Uh, but goddamn, I just can't pull the trigger and ask this criminal cartel to that that's in my house right now taking half my stuff slapping me on the ass disrespecting yeah. me telling me i can't have a baby <laughs> walker lawn dart slapping that shit out of my hand telling me yeah. i can't snort lines lines of coke off a, a hippopotamus ass fuck you yeah. state get out of my house <laughs> this this thing that's riding me right now that's ass raping me i have to I, I beg it to stop that guy who looks a little sketchy for moving into my neighborhood or actually not even moving into my neighborhood, moving into a neighborhood that's 4,000 fucking miles away that, that I have nothing to do yeah. with. And yeah. the only reason I'm worried about that guy is because this guy here is forcing me into a relationship with that guy. That's why I'm worried about him moving to, from there to theirs. So I'm asking the very guy, anyways, you get that. I know. He's read all and these I, books and he's still... <laughs> I, 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 hear, I hear you, Tim. I hear you. I, yeah. and, you but know, that's why your boy's here. This is why your boy's here. That's Max right. Yeah. So, nice yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, you know, so I need, yeah, we need, I need somebody like yourself to, to represent, uh, you know, more of what, what, uh, what my thoughts are on these ideas, which you really do. And, but part of also what we're doing is, you know, the, the, some of the, these things are meant to be, to build community also. I mean, right. we, I want to have those discussions across what, uh, between what you would call, uh, you know, like the anarchist leaning libertarians and the libertarian leaning conservatives. I mean, there is a, I, we both have a lot of friends in what we would call the, the conservative right. movement and they're going to be there. And the, you know, this is just a great opportunity for us to all get together and have these, uh, these conversations. And, and like I said, you know, free speech allows us to do that. Everyone at this thing will be an advocate of, of free speech um, we, they might not like what some of the speakers are going to say, but, but it yeah. is what it is. And, and yeah, so the, and the other hey, big headliner, Arcee, should course, I deliver my speech in a drag outfit? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, Go right no, ahead. I, I feel very comfortable doing that. <laughs> no, I, I know. Well, it actually, it, you know, if it was 15, 15 years ago before the whole drag thing was so politicized, it was just right. like a, it would have just been a funny thing to do. Right. It um, been, yeah. Now you, you try pulling that off and you're like just a hateful person. And, uh, 
and those are things I'll never understand about about uh, the world we live in right now. But again, you know, hopefully, though, you know, a conference like this and building a building a community, we can have we can have those conversations and um, you know, free from you know the outrage mob and the mainstream media yeah. telling us all these lies and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I want to right. talk a bit about Per Bylan coming too. He's a senior fellow from the Mises Institute. He's yeah. he's just released a fantastic little primer on economics. Um, and yeah, really glad he could make it. Um, Jayant's had lots of uh, Mises Institute uh, personalities at his event in Vancouver. Uh, Jeff Deist has gone there multiple mm. times. I think yeah. Dr. Walter Block, of course, and. Um, so that's something that I'm hoping we can continue, uh, include, you know, include the Mises Institute in, in the Calgary event moving forward. And, um, yeah, just, just excited, just excited to get, well, tickets go on sale March 20th. We'll see. Uh, I'll be, my, my excitement level will wane if we don't sell any tickets. So, right. Well, listen, guys, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, this, will pro is probably due to be released uh march 22nd i believe so tickets will be on sale where can they go to to get tickets uh the website is capitalism and morality.com so you will capitalism if you go and there morality.com okay capitalism and morality.com uh and you'll find also links to the vancouver event there uh you'll find links to all the speakers uh my podcast the darcy Drow podcast and and yeah and uh tim and we'll i mentioned this to you before we want to give your listeners a, a promo code so when you go to release oh, it, awesome we will have that set up so that your listeners will get a discount um um we'll have that ready for when you release the podcast i've not organized enough to okay. say what it is no right worries now. Well, let, let me let me uh is it something i can put in the show notes like yes it, for yes, everyone yes. to see okay yep, guys it, so so look just it, uh, the promo code is going to be uh, attached to the show notes here uh, underneath the m my talking head. So um, yeah. go go check that out. Thank you so much for uh, for that, Darcy. And yeah, uh, guys, get, definitely get a ticket. Let's make this thing um, big and fun. And you know, I guarantee you're going to have a fun time there. Uh, you're going to get to meet B Bernier. You're going to get to meet myself and all these other guys. And uh, you'll get to hear what I'm going to say. And uh, it's going to be well, the most radical yeah. thing. I'll, I'll be the most radical speaker probably at that conference. That's and, what we're counting uh, on. I, I'm going to, you know, I'll let, I'll let Ber Bernier warm up the room a little bit before um, <laughs> before, yeah. before I take it yeah. all the way. You know? Yeah. Well, and, and for your listeners in Alberta, too, we, we are going to be having a panel on secession and independence. So we got a few big oh, nice. names that are going to sit in on that uh cory morgan of course who i think you had on recently a good friend yeah. of both of ours uh has released a book called the sovereigntist handbook mm -hmm. um there's a few more names uh, i don't i don't have them fully committed yet but uh right. once i do the, those updates will be on the website awesome yeah awesome yeah it's it, it was uh it was a great time. I remember, uh, you know, you've, you've got everything from the ones I've been at. Anyways, you've got these uh, very accomplished investors telling you how to protect yourself from things like bank crashes. That seems fairly pertinent these days. I remember one um, one lady there spoke about parenting from an objectivist perspective, uh, you know, uh, basically peaceful parenting, how to um, approach parenting so that you raise a, a child that is not that that is ungovernable let's put it that way mm -hmm. right and typically mm -hmm. parents uh standard parenting techniques kind of teach uh or impose compliant conformity and compliance and re reward those kinds of things right so she teaches okay well how 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 can you have a relationship where you're challenging your kid you're still setting boundaries but you're also um promoting a free thinking, free spirited individual and nurturing that as well. So I, that was a very interesting talk as yeah, well. I uh, sure. could have used it like, you know, a dozen years before uh, that she gave that talk because I made all the bad, wrong mistakes, but um, my, kid, my <laughs> oh, kids yeah. turned out pretty good. But yeah, uh, yeah right. anyways, yeah, you're going to get a little bit of everything there. And um, 
gonna get yeah. some time to socialize. So I hope I hope I see you guys there in Calgary on what date is it again? May twentieth. May right? s- Saturday, May twentieth, twenty twenty three, and we'll right. we'll have a uh, like a reception dinner uh, the night before that we still have to organize, and uh, another social event on Sunday for people who are still around. Uh, but the main nice. event is the Saturday about 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. And you, you know, Tim, one of the, I noticed you just had uh, Jeff Berwick on too. And, yeah. you know, one of the, one of my big inspirations about, uh, about hosting an event like this was the time, you know, it was five or six years ago. Now you and I were down at Anarchapulco and had a good yeah. time. And of course it's it, pretty expensive to go to, to Mexico every year for, uh, for a conference like this and, or, uh, you know the other one I that I haven't made it to yet, but want to is Freedom Fest, um, and mm. it's just tough because we just don't have we just haven't had something like that in Canada on that scale. And and uh, myself and and Jayant and and the rest of the group we're working with uh, Clayton Reader, who's is on our team. He's hosted events in in Calgary for ten years, I think, yeah. and and really kept a great group of uh, libertarians. Uh, you know, together uh, at social events, and they've brought in speakers and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we're really hoping that we can we can grow this thing and and turn it into something bigger than um, you know than what it is now. But a a weekend long conference, something that you know we can we can that turns into more of a retreat or a vacation kind of thing uh, for like minded people, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember you talking about that back in, uh, you know, when we're sitting on the beach there sipping some Mai Tais, you're like, man, we got to bring this, <laughs> this, this experience to, uh, to Alberta, you know, I mean, yeah. it might be, you know, the psychedelic stuff might be hard to, to get going here, but, uh, yeah, well, I'm, yeah, <laughs> it'd be nice to have a little not... side project there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that's not, your uh, well, it, it's a, it's a decentralized kind of feel right. we have, so whatever anybody yeah, yeah. wants to take on right, or right. organize, they can, but I'm not putting my fingerprints on any yeah, of that for yeah, sure. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> No 3D gun printing workshops or anything. Here. No. We're gonna keep well, this... again, like I say, somebody wants to somebody wants to put it on. Let me know. We'll uh, we will have that conversation. But for the most part, I mean, I've just we've been reaching out to our friends, like to to get this yeah. thing off the ground. And unfortunately, there hasn't been time to get, uh, you know, Doug Casey. I would love to have Doug Casey here. He's been to the Vancouver event. Uh, Rick Rule was. Um, potentially coming but has some schedule conflicts just because of Mm. short notice so but yeah those are the we want to make sure that uh we're we're uh getting names like that in the future and and we do we have a fantastic lineup considering what we've uh the the short amount of time we've had with max and pear and yourself uh phil de brandt you know um it it's gonna it is gonna be great and there is some more we do have some irons in the fire still to really round this thing out and and uh and make it a big deal so nice yeah. awesome all well, okay guys go to capitalism and morality.com use the promo code below and uh get get a discount and hopefully we'll see you at capitalism morality thanks for coming on darcy thanks for organizing this event um fantastic long overdue i'm glad to see uh your vision that we talked about there on that beach in uh, acapulco coming to fruition yeah me too thanks a lot tim Beautiful.